Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. So good to see you. So good to have you with my business partner, Art Kirsch, and our favorite baby boom philosopher, Bill Jordan. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, Bill. How you doing? I'm doing very well. I hope you guys are. Good. good. You know, to, to, uh, to lead off this segment, um, it seems to me that with the publishing of uh, your book, I got my fingers. I on just it. happened to have a copy. You happen to have your embrace the boom, all your principles. I, so just I refuse my... to be, guys. I refuse to be a cheap shill for crash commercial purposes. Hold the book up, John. I'm oh, going to okay. hold up the mug instead. Okay, good. So uh, here's my question. Uh, there's no question that, um, as as uh, you two guys know, some people out there in in celebrating Actland know that uh, I have a 25 year rolling plan. So uh, 25 years from now, uh, when I have, I'm s celebrating uh, several of my anniversaries of my 100th birthday, uh, uh, I, I and many other baby boomers will be able to say, you know, this book has been an early influence on me because it had been so long ago, now a quarter of a century from now. Yeah. But uh, I guess the real question is, uh, Especially for you, our uh, esteemed author, Bill Jordan, uh, were there books when you were growing up that influenced you, that had helped set the stage for you the way you are now, or were just meaningful in your life? Were, were there books like Embrace the Boom that uh, you embraced as a child? Art, that is an excellent question. And in thinking about it, uh, and I didn't bring it down for show and tell. And I, obviously, I have I have uh, several uh, versions and uh, trans translations of it. But I think being raised in the Southern Baptist Church, I was raised in Virginia by two you know very uh, passionate and uh, Christian parents, uh, and Christianity being of my faith. So the Holy Bible, I think, you know, quite honestly, has got to be first and foremost the most impactful book of my life, and has guided me and kind of set my my moral compass for me. So that would be number one. The, the, the first book, and I, lo I always loved reading, but I think the first book for me, and I wasn't a kid kid, although I, mean, I guess looking back now, I would consider myself a kid, was probably I was around 23 years old. And I don't know why I picked the book up, but I picked up the Dale Carnegie classic, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Hmm. Wow. And for whatever reason, at that age, that book has stuck with me to where I, I reference it today and I uh, recommend it to people who seem to be constantly in turmoil or anxious or worried about something. It's just a brilliant book. And the other, you know, the hand in hand uh, book with that is uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. They're both timeless works. And, and Dale Carnegie, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was in the 90s, maybe the early 2000s, got a lot of I mean, people were making fun of the books, but I just think it's basic wisdom. So how to how to how to win friends and influence people and uh, how to stop worrying and start living by Dale Carnegie. Those were early on books that made an impact to me that, that I still think about and try to do those principles. Two books now that definitely impact me and as part of my morning reading every morning is this one. I mentioned this before by Ryan Holiday. This guy's a young guy, like 34 years old, but he's a modern day philosopher. And he borrows from the ancient Stoics and the ancient philosophers in this book, The Daily Stoic. And it's just, you know, it's a reading for, for each day. It's just a very short reading. So uh, this, this helps ground me in my day. And also, for the second time, I'm not just reading, but I am studying. And it might be a chapter a day, but I've got my yellow highlighter out now. And this is like the best, I think it's the best-selling book in in the business category right now on Amazon, and it's Am Atomic Habits by James Clear. And it's if you want to build a habit or you want to get rid of a habit, he tells you how to do it. And I, I find it fascinating because I'm still trying to build some good habits and I've got a couple of bad habits I need to I need to get rid of. So those are those are what, four or five books right there that I find very impactful. Um, and I'm sure there have been other ones along the way because I virtually am always reading. Hmm. I, what I about you, John? 
Uh, well, I was just thinking, Bill, as you were talking about your youth, you know, you, the first book that um, really impacted you was uh, you were reading in your 20s. Right. And I was thinking at the same time that the kids today won't have any books that impacted them because they don't read books. You know, what's the Kindle that impacted you most is the question of the future. You know, you know? If, if they read it, you know, and it's a, and I, you know, it's been attributed to uh, Mark Twain or Steinbeck or whoever. Uh, it was an author who's who said it's it's not a question of the, it's, it's not the kids don't like to read. Kids haven't found the right books. And I really that, do believe that. I really do believe that. Yeah, hmm. that might have been my case. I don't, I, I, you know, I, as you were talking, I really couldn't think back to a book that changed my life, if you will. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, uh, well, I didn't read, didn't read the book, although I might have incidentally, I took the Dale Carnegie course when I was uh, starting out in, in business and sales and things like that. And I found it extremely useful. But when I was a kid, the only books that I read that I remember as a kid reading were the Hardy Boys, the adventure series with the they had this uh, one, they had this lake with a with a, a boathouse. And uh, it was really to me, it was exciting. And I watched uh, listen to all those. But I guess the first uh, books that uh, and mostly I've read technical uh, manuals and and uh, nonfiction for most of my adult life until recently, which is another story. But um, along the way in my mid to late 20s, uh, I picked up uh, a volume of something called The History of Civilization mm. by Will and Ariel Durant. It's about 10 or 11 uh, volumes of about 1,100 pages each of small print. And uh, I actually eventually got the whole series. I have the, the whole series of books in my house now, uh, although I used to get them for the library. And uh, for a lousy uh, history student in high school and college, uh, I just became fascinated by it and the sort of non-judgmental way they took a look at all civilizations. So uh, I would say that uh, for me, it was a strange amalgam of, of uh, fiction uh, with the Hardy Boys, non-fiction with uh, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, uh, yep. which many yep. of us have read. And uh, then... One. Um, uh, the History of Civilization, which, again, I, I, I've read several times. And then recently, uh, thanks to my good friend and partner, John Coleman, um, I started reading the uh, histories of J.A. Jance uh, because he and his wife had been reading them for years, and my wife has read histories, but I haven't read fiction in years. So, And I've read in the last year about 40 of her 70 uh, uh, titles. So... Uh, wow. Books are important. Book, books should be pretty much important to all of us. So I, well, I know, just there's, thought there's a famous quote again from from one of the authors, and again whether it's Mark Twain or whoever else, it's like, "He who does not read is no better off than one who cannot read." <laughs> yep. So I I thought of uh, while Art was talking, I thought of a book because I really don't I don't think I had anything to change my life except this particular book. It was second grade, third grade, somewhere in there. I had, at that point, I had not read a, a book more than, I don't know, 10 pages. I, I, you know, a, a, books with pictures. Sure. I, I was not a reader. And, and that really, this book was the transition to becoming a reader. Um, I can remember as a kid flipping through my brother's comic books and loving comic books because they, the pictures told a story and I didn't want to read. You know, the words were complicated or maybe I couldn't read. But this book changed my life. And I remember the book uh, distinctly. It was called uh, John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones. And it was like First Admiral or John. It had a subtitle or something. Right, right. But. What made it significant for me was it was the first book that had no pictures that I read. And it was it was a thick book. It was probably 300, maybe even 400 pages. And for a kid who didn't read, really, only looked at picture books, 
that was a big transition. But I loved that book so much. I found it so fascinating that I plowed through kind of like Will and Air, going through Will and Ariel Durant for me. Um, but I plowed through that book and finished it. And from that point on, I was no longer intimidated by books with no pictures. I became a reader. Mm. That was, it, looking back at it now, I realized that was really pretty significant. Yeah, you um, found the right book. I don't book. know why I didn't think of it before. You found the right book. Yeah, found yeah. the right book. And of course, be, once you are a reader, um, you pick up all kinds of stuff, you know. You, if the title grabs you, sure, you'll read almost anything. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. it, it it opens the world to you. I mean, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, you want to learn something or entertain, pick up some philosophy or some tips on living. Man, it's yeah. all in there. I mean, the yeah. library so, is just you know. Bill, do you think um, people of our age, the over fifty set, do you think we read more? I know most of us have more time, so we read a little bit more. But do you think there's something about getting older that increases the appreciation for reading? Um, I, I think there might be. And also, there's something that it, it, it took me a while to kind of crystallize in my mind was, you know, once you get out of school and sometimes reading when you're in school is a drag because you're being assigned reading. You're, you're, you're being told what you have to read. Once you're out on your own and you can read whatever you want and you can learn about whatever you want to learn about, then that's when I think it, for me, it really kicked it into high gear. Yeah. Well, I, I, have, I have a question here and it's, uh, you know, I know that you'll be embarrassed, um, uh, Bill, but um, trying to embarrass you is one of the goals that I have in my life that makes me happy. Okay, sure. So if, 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 if you wouldn't mind, since you're now a published author, can you once again hold up your book and maybe even the wonderful coffee cup that goes along with that as its companion? Okay. And tell us where can people find these things? Uh, Bill Jordan, embrace the boom.com. Bill Jordan, embrace the boom.com. And that's a link to the YouTube videos of embrace the boom and the practices. Uh, you can order the mug directly from there. The link to the book to the, from the publisher Webster publishing is on there. But a shortcut for the book is, uh, you know, Amazon.com. Just type in Embrace the Boom or Bill Jordan Embrace the Boom or go right to the link to uh, to the book. Uh, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, Walmart.com. Uh, those are ways to get it. And uh, right now I've got, I don't have as many reviews or ratings as I want, but all of them are five stars. So I'm very I'm very, very proud and humbled by that. So it's a short, uh, maybe we've talked about this before when you guys let me talk about the book. I'm finding it in the, the best way I can describe or kind of in people describing the book, which it is. It's a short, but it's a sticky book. Sticky meaning after you read it, something will come to your mind. You'll be reminded, oh yeah, calm is contagious. Calm is a superpower. I need to calm down here. Oh, I need to, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. I need to get on the scales, you know, <laughs> something like that. So um, it's a book that, that hopefully you're going to want to reference from time to time, maybe regularly or semi-regularly. And I appreciate you guys letting me talk about it. Okay. Well, well, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, John, were we, were we, were we at, Interrupting or disturbing your reading? Uh, I I was just noticing chapter four. Yeah. Stay in the present. One yeah, of my well, favorite. You got to work. Uh, got to work on best practices. You got to work on that. Hey, one, they're John. all. You know, they're all practices. We'll never get them all right. I mean, we're all human. So these that's are. Right. Uh, that's why they're called practices. You just, you know, it's why we shower every day or every other day or whenever often you do it. I mean, you you have to do it more than once, right? Yeah, that's what these practices are. Got to practice it. Okay, so with that, I'd like to raise my uh, cup and uh, tell all of our audience, go by the book, go by the mug, and uh, come back and see us soon now, you hear? Yeah, and, and most importantly, the reminder being to wherever you are in your life, but this is focused mainly for baby boomers, but live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. That's what it's about. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, 
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.